and welcome to World Vegetarian Day in San Francisco. Yes, yes. And so my name is Chef Lisa Books Williams, and this is my third year being able to do a demo for you, and I'm so excited to be able to come back again. And alongside me is my sidekick, my friend, my mentor, and one of the most interesting women you'll ever meet, Miss Elizabeth Bechtold. <laughs> Now, um, now, in case you didn't read the title, we're doing a raw tour of the Middle East. So this is Middle Eastern inspired raw foods. How many of you have been to the Middle East? Anybody here? Okay. Right. Well, Liz, Liz, why don't you talk a little bit about what you're wearing and the years you spent living in the Middle East? Yes. I'm wearing a, um, a wedding gown. It's all hand cross stitched. In fact, I've had it for 25 years. It's the first time I'm wearing it because it's so delicate. But this is a wedding and we found it in the soup, which is a marketplace in uh, Syria, in Damascus. So that's what I heard. And after they, they get married, this is the symbol of getting married. And then when they have their first baby, they start embroidering this side. And this here is just uh, something to cover up my hair to hear. <laughs> but anyway, this is what. Uh, and I did live for three years in the Middle East. I did two years in Sudan and one in Egypt. My husband was getting his PhD from Princeton in Middle East Studies. So when he was a professor at the University of Maryland, we did a lot of um, partying, and I did Middle East cooking. Um, I used to teach Middle East cooking, and we have many parties. And so Lisa's making a lot of things from the Middle East with the, with the flavors of the cumin, and the, uh, well, she'll explain. Mm -hmm. But um, in Sudan, it was very simple eating. It was basically very poor people. I lived in the mud hut in Ondaman, which is a suburb of Khartoum. I had two babies, two month old and two year old, and I had no servants. And in the summer, it would be 135 degrees, although we weren't there then. We were there in winter when it was 104 degrees. With, with one heating fan, that was it, no air conditioning. So I, lived, I lived because my husband was a professor, studying to be a professor of Middle East Studies, and he also taught soccer, one of the professional soccer teams. So we had to live in a village where the soccer team was. So, in any case. Lisa has very authentic tastes and flavors in the Middle East. Yes, and Liz has approved my menu. So this is someone who lived in the Middle East, you know, and so she's approved, she's approved this menu. I just want to tell them one funny little thing. You know, Liz, uh, Liz had said to me, Lisa, you know, you should wear this, you should wear this wedding dress. Um, you should wear this, you know, wedding dress while you're doing your demo, but you can't get any food on it. And I said, no, Liz, I don't know. I can't guarantee that I won't get any, uh, any food on it while I'm, while I'm doing the demo. So Liz is wearing this, um, this beautiful gown. So when you think of Middle Eastern food, everybody thinks of like the traditional, like Middle Eastern foods. And one of them that you traditionally think of is hummus. Or some people say hummus, you know, so hummus. So the traditional hummus is made with garbanzo beans, right? So the garbanzo beans are going to be like higher in, you know, higher in carbs and higher in protein and a little more starchy. But I created a really great hummus made out of squash. Now, now, squash is good for you. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay, you know why squash is so good for you? Because it's full of B vitamins. And B vitamins are good for your? Everything. They're good for your everything. They're good for your brain, right? <laughs> and they're full of niacin, too. And so these squash is excellent for you. It's very low in calories, high in fiber, and high in water content. So in this particular recipe, we're not just using the, the regular zucchini, but we're also using the yellow crookneck squash. And this is, sometimes its neck is more crooked, <laughs> but this one's neck isn't too crooked. So in order to make this recipe, you are going to start with a green zucchini and a yellow zucchini. And you know what? Go get the list from the table so they can sign it. Yeah, the list is at the booth. Okay, yeah, one of you. Okay, so we're going to start with a yellow zucchini. Yeah, we're going to hand out, um, well, I will email you one of the recipes, and then all of these recipes are in my booklet. Yes, so I'm selling my recipe booklet, which has all the recipes for World Vegetarian Day dinner, plus bonus recipes, all Middle Eastern inspired, and a resource guide to be able to obtain um, the special items in order to 
to, to make these meals. And we're pre preparing the, the raw meal tonight. Yeah, the raw dinner. Yeah, we're doing the raw dinner. So this is going to be part of the raw dinner, and we're going to serve it with fermented cumin crackers and sesame za'atar flax crisps. And you're going to be able to try that in just a few moments. Do you want to try it? Yes. Okay. You haven't even seen me make it, and they already want to try it, Liz. They're motivated. I know. I'm excited about that. Okay. So we're putting in, we're putting in our squash. Okay, Water. and then in addition to that, we're going to put in some fresh squeezed lemon juice. Now, everybody knows how to get juice out of a lemon the best way. Or do you want me to show you? Okay, so you take your lemon, you take your lemon in your dominant hand and you smash it on the table. Then you turn it around and you smash it down again. And you'll see a little bit of lemon oil come out on the board and you'll start to smell it. Then you're going to roll it. You just Put your weight into it and you roll, okay? And then you just cut it and then you can put it in a, a, a zester like this or you can use it in a machine. And one of the great things about lemon juice is it's excellent to freeze. So whenever there's a plethora of lemons, just freeze your juice. And, that, and Liz, Liz taught, me, taught me that. So you always want to have fresh lemon juice on hand. Stay away from the plastic lemons. All right, so this recipe is going to use a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. So we're going to put in a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Okay, and we have our two, we have our two beautiful squash. So that's exciting. Yeah, ask me whatever you want. Because it gives it a better texture in this recipe. And you don't want it to look green. You know, and if you use the skin, I mean, you could use the skin. For this particular recipe, I like peeling it. So, but it's up to you. It's up to you. And so, what we're also going to use is we're going to put in some garlic. And garlic is used a lot in, in Middle Eastern food. And garlic is an excellent anti-inflammatory. And when I use the garlic, what I like to do is I like to cut off the little end here and just put it in the Vitamix. Now, how many of you have bought a garlic bulb and it has like a green sprout coming out of it? Yeah, you've done that? Okay, do not eat that sprout because you'll be burping and you'll have severe indigestion. So what you need to do is if you have that little green sprout coming out of your garlic bulb, you need to cut the garlic and remove the green sprout. That is inedible. You cannot eat that. Okay, you could plant it, but don't eat it. Okay, all right. So we're... Do not freeze your garlic. It changes, the, it changes the flavor and the essence of the garlic. So those frozen garlics that you see or whatever, just forget about it. Use, use fresh, okay? That's, what I, that's, that's my personal opinion. Um, yes? What about green garlic? Like a green onion? Don't you eat that? I, I, not really. I, I've eaten, um, uh, you know, I'll eat scallions. But I don't eat like a garlic bulb that has sprouted. No, because it's inedible. And it's vintelish. Okay. Well, I, I, I haven't had an experience with that, but I'm sure that's fine. I'm talking about the garlic bulbs that you buy in the store. You, yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. Sure. That's fine. So, all right. And so the next thing that we want to do is we want to put in some Himalayan salt. And so one of the best Himalayan salts on the market is, um, is Royal Himalayan. And tell, Liz, tell people why they want to use um, Himalayan salt as opposed to regular well, salt. Well, it has all the minerals in it, where, where the white salt, the iodized, iodized salt, is all in stripped of its minerals. You really want to use either sea salt or Himalayan salt. Right, because it's also a natural colloidal salt. So that means it's similar to the same sodium that is in your cells, and so it's going to be better absorbed. So you want to stay away from umbrella salt, everybody. The umbrella salt is not good for you. All right. So we're also going to add a little bit of olive oil. So if you're going to use olive oil, you want to make sure that it's extra virgin and cold pressed. Now, this olive oil comes directly from Palestine. It's imported from Palestine, and I'm selling it at my booth for only $15 a bottle. And this is absolutely excellent, delicious, pure olive oil. And we're only going to use about an eighth of a cup. If you do not want to use olive oil, you can use water, but it creates a creamier texture to be able to use the olive oil. No more questions. Okay. Is and that raw? Yes, this, yeah, this is raw. It's extra virgin cold press. 
And this is from Palestine, and it's very pure. And this is really delicious olive oil. And so what we're also going to add is we're going to add some cumin. Now, cumin is a wonderful spice. I love it. And we're going to put about two teaspoons of ground cumin in there. Okay. And the cumin really helps to bring out the flavor. There we go. Okay. Now, we still have one more really important ingredient. We are going to add some tahini and some cashini. Now, cashini is cashew butter mixed with tahini. So you know cashews are naturally kind of sweet? So this is really delicious. Isn't it great, Liz? Don't you just love it? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit. We're going to do half and half. And one of the great things about tahini is that it's full of calcium. You know, a tablespoon of tahini has more calcium than a glass of milk. So if any of you are still drinking the cow, get off the cow and go with the, go with the tahini. And this isn't going to give you osteoporosis, okay? Because dairy kept from a cow is very acidic. And, uh, well, you already know that. You'll hear that from the speakers. Is the raw just as bad, raw dairy? Is raw dairy, Liz? No, just honey. Okay, what do you think about the raw dairy? He's asking about that. You mean like the goat's milk? More like well, it depends on what book you read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's so many. There's so many different things out there. I mean, there's right. Philosophies. Yeah, there's so many. So many different every, things. Every speaker today and tomorrow is going to have a different view on whatever. So oh yeah. Listen to everybody and then take it home and digest it. And okay. Your own okay. No, that was only a fourth of a cup. So we did half cashini. And we did half tahini. But you could use all cashini or all tahini. If you're going to use all tahini, it's going to be a little bit slight more bitter than, than the cashini. So we just stick it in the blender. And we're also giving away free samples of the Yes. Tahini. So everybody, if you stay to the end, if you stay to the end, in the middle. if you stay to the end, one of my sponsors gladly supplied me with tahini packets for everyone and cashini packets for everyone. What do you think about that? And that would probably cost you like $1.79 at Rainbow each. Oh, and you're going to get it for free here just for coming to the demo. Yay! All right. So now, now we're just going to turn it on. Yep. No, it's perfect the way it is. Yeah. Okay. See how easy that is, everybody? Yep. Uh-huh. Now, in order to have this squash hummus, You've got, we're, we're, we really want to live. We really want you to live it up. So, with the squash hummus, we're going to serve it to you with a carrot, an organic carrot, and two wonderful crackers that are Middle Eastern inspired. What do you think about that, everybody? Okay. Yes. So we've got two crackers. We've got two crackers for you. One of the crackers. One of the crackers is using the za'atar spice mix. Okay, and the Zatar spice mix is a combination of thyme, sumac, salt, and toasted sesame seeds. And I put that with um, soaked flax and soaked and sprouted sunflower seeds in a batter of tomato um, with um, the Zatar spice and a little bit of um, a little bit of other spices. So I think you'll really enjoy that. And we've got another cracker. This is a fermented cumin cracker. Probiotics in a cracker. Who is excited about getting probiotics in a cracker? Yeah. Yes, that's pretty exciting. And so this, this recipe is a modified version of Liz's recipe. And Liz, tell them a little bit about that cracker. Well, this cracker takes five days to make, so I don't know how you have much time. What happens is you take your flax seeds and you soak it for 12 hours or so, mm -hmm. and then the next day you put it in uh, the Vitamix and the, and the processor, the um, Cuisinart, mm -hmm. with celery and onion and garlic and all kinds of good stuff, and you mix it all together, um, and then you let it ferment for two days. That's why you're going to have a tangy cracker, and that's why it's, it's fermented and full of antibiotics. Yes, and full of, full of wonderful probiotics. On the fourth day for about 
36 hours, and then you have this crack. Yes, and so you can tell the fermented cracker because it has a natural tang. And I've had people say to me, Lisa, did you put lemon in it? I'm like, no, it's just natural fermentation. And if any of you have um, done bread, sourdough bread, you know that when you're letting your bread rise, you know, you see that it, it gets about twice the size. And what's exciting about this fermented cracker is the dough will get about twice the size. Now, you need to leave it alone for two days. Don't go messing with it and start throwing stuff in there and adding stuff. Just leave it alone, and it will have a nice, soury nice soury smell and a nice natural tang. And Liz used these in exchange, and for money at oh, Burning I Man. Burning Man every year. I'm a Burning she goes to Burning Man. I make, I make about a thousand of these crackers. And, and, and Burning Man, you know, you barter. Like I got this jewelry for 10 crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I, got That's right. I got a shower for 15. But anyway, everybody loves my crackers. And so I, I barter at Burning Man. Right. Now Liz's recipe is, a, Liz's recipe is different than you know, it's different than, than this one, but it's similar. And one of the things that I wanted to let you know is with regards to the crackers is that you can use nama shoyu. Everybody's heard of nama shoyu, right, which is, in, which is a, a raw pasteurized um, uh, soy sauce. But, in, but that contains, you know, gluten. So what I've been using instead is the coconut secret coconut aminos. So this is, you can use this in place of Bragg's. You can use it in place of Nama Shoyu, and this stuff is fantastic. And it just has, um, it just has wonderful, wonderful vitamins and minerals in it. It says it's a source of 17 amino acids, minerals, vitamins, and a neutral pH. And so it's a, it contains two to 14 times the amino acid content of soy. That's pretty cool, huh? So the coconut aminos. And, um, and they're a company out of Mill Valley. So they're right over the bridge, and they're a great, they're a great company. Taste? You can get it at Rainbow. Oh. The yeah. Taste is similar it, similar? It's similar to Bragg's, yes. Or you could use Wheat Free Tamari. Yeah, it's kind of a salty, but still has a little hint of sweet. Yeah, and so I'm using that. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think about the hummus, everybody? You like that? Okay. And, and what's... And what's great about what's great about the hummus is is in, you could use it on a salad instead of salad dressing. So say someday you don't want to do salad dressing, just put the hummus on there. And snacks are essential, and this is a great snack. And everywhere that I go and I do a demo, people love the hummus, and I have my students tell me over and over again that they love to keep making it. Okay, and all of you will be able to get started because you're going to get some free cashini and some free tahini. So. All right. Now, since we're on a fermentation kick, I'd like to give you a sample of something else that's going to be at my dinner tonight. So, um, one of my friends, um, Heather Haxo Phillips, she's a fermentation queen. So she said, Lisa, you should start fermenting more because of all the natural probiotics and it's so good for your, for your body. So, I did some research about what's very popular in the Middle East and they love eating pickled turnips and pickled beets. And coming from Pennsylvania, we would eat, you know, a lot of pickled a lot of pickled vegetables. So I created a raw version of pickled turnips and beets. And um, this is made, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Sure. And so this is made with the coconut vinegar. So instead of the traditional Bragg's apple cider vinegar or the white distilled vinegar, I'm using raw coconut vinegar. And the raw coconut vinegar, it's just fantastic. Um, it's abundant source of amino acids, vitamin C, and B vitamins, and neutral pH. So this I, re this I really recommend. And all these recipes are in my booklet, which is only, which is only $7. Okay. Is your brand recommendations? Yes. I have a resource guide to all the different brands that I, that I recommend. I'll take one more question, then we're going to the next thing. I don't believe that there's more sugar in this. Um, I think, um, I mean, I think this is delicious. I used it in my persimmon salad dressing um, instead of the traditional apple cider vinegar, and it gets the nice little kick that is really delicious that, that you enjoy. And this is, um, you know, why not go for something that has the optimal nutrients possible? And so I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, of the coconut secret products. 
Okay, one last question. Have you done any way to avoid using oils in your preparations? Well, sure. What I mentioned is that if you're making the hummus, you can use water instead of oil. It just changes the consistency. But you're only using an eighth of a cup of extra virgin, raw, cold-pressed Palestinian olive oil to make a huge batch of the hummus. So, but you could use water instead. It's just not going to have quite the same, same consistency. Okay? All right. So what did you all think about the pickled, about the pickled beet? I mean, the pickled turnip. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's different. And it's, so it's a nice pickled flavor. And so, oh, wait, are they coming with more? Would, no, there's more. I have more. Yeah, my, my assistants will get you some more. Yeah, we've got more. So everybody, all, in order to do the pickling, you just get a big jar. And you can get these big jars at rainbows. Yeah, you can get the big jars at rainbows. And then you just put your turnips and beets in here with a little bit of the coconut vinegar and salt and some jalapenos and whatever type of seasoning you want. And then you allow it to stay in a warm spot for three days. And that's a shorter time than your crackers, Liz, right. you know, to make. <laughs> and this is a delicious condiment that they eat all throughout the Middle East. And you will get this at my dinner tonight. So, okay. Question? Yes. Is, so you, is all that liquid from coconut vinegar? No. In order to make like a big jar like that, you're only going to use about one cup of the coconut vinegar and the rest you fill with warm water. Okay. And like when we pickled back in Pennsylvania, we would use like alum and the pickling spices and we would cook stuff and you don't need any of that. And so this is just a nice, natural, pickled food, Ferment, fermented food, OK? Oh, and you know what I forgot to put in the hummus, everybody? I forgot to put in the soaked sunflower seeds. Now, oh, <laughs> so you know what? <laughs> yeah, well, the soaked sunflower seeds are optional. So you still liked it without the sunflower seeds, right? OK. Oh, wait, OK. Put it in. Put it in? All right. Put it in. So this is going to make it a little bit thicker. And yeah, the soaked sunflower seeds. And, uh, but you don't, need those, you don't need to put them in there. It's an optional ingredient. But why not add a little bit of extra thickness and protein? So you take a third of a cup of the sunflower seeds, and you soak them. And it comes out to 2 thirds of a cup by the time you're done soaking. OK. Beautiful. So you can see it changed the consistency, the consistency a little. Is this the one that's going to be in, in, their, in their sample? No, they already got their sample. But they, you had the sunflower seeds in it. What? Did you have the sunflower seeds in no. the sample? No. Okay. Oh, yes, in the sample they had the sunflower seeds. Yeah, so we can just go ahead and put that. Yeah, so the sample you got had the sunflower seeds in it. OK? All right. So everybody, you've already tried, you've already tried the, uh, you know, the squash hummus and the crackers, but you're going to get a larger portion for tonight's raw dinner. Um, you tried the pickled turnip and beet, which is, well, you didn't try the beet, but you tried the pickled turnip, and that's going to be a condiment for tonight's dinner. And would you like to know what else is going to be on the menu for tonight's raw dinner? Okay. And you know what's the best part about this raw dinner? It's only $22. And it helps support San Francisco Vegetarian Society. Don't you think that's a good thing? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and it helps support this wonderful nonprofit organization. And so you're also going to get um, an autumn green salad topped with shaved fennel and a persimmon dressing. And the persimmons, they aren't out right now. But I'm a dehydrating diva, and I dried a bunch of persimmons. So I just rehydrated my dried persimmons and the dressing is great and you'll love it. And, um, and then you're also, um, the main course, it's pumpkin seed falafel. So I soaked and sprouted some pumpkin seeds, added some vegetables and herbs to them and I dried them in little, like little falafel shapes. And they're going to be in um, a tortilla made out of zucchini and tomatoes. And yes, and then I dried it, and, um, and uh, then I made a macadamia feta. So you know feta cheese is bad because it comes from cow, but I made a macadamia feta using macadamia nuts and Irish moss. 
So an Irish moss is really good, really good for the body, and it cuts down on the fat and heaviness content, and you can't even taste it. So that's going to be like the sauce in the falafel wrap with a lot of great vegetables. Not the pomegranates, the persimmons. Yes, I wash them and then I just slice them and I dry them. Right. And I, and I do all of my drying without any salt, without any oil, and without any sulfur dioxide. So if you go and you buy tomatoes in the store, they're going to have sulfur dioxide, the apricots, everything. So all my stuff has been dried without the use of, without the use of chemicals. Yeah, the dinner is here, and Dr. Milton Mills is the keynote speaker, and he's really a great speaker. And so all that, you know, $22 for dinner and a show. Well, not really a show, but it's kind of like a, yeah, and it helps support the Vegetarian Society, so that's the most, most important part. And so in addition to the falafels, you're going to get the hummus with the crackers. Um, you're going to get a pomegranate kale salad. Um, you're going to also get a really delicious dessert that I created using apricots and apricots and pistachios. So you really enjoy that. And then we have a nice lemon tea with um, figs. I, um, I, I, did, I did the herbal tea infusion with figs wrapped in cheesecloth. And then, um, so you get the natural fig juice and sweetness and then a little bit of um, Jerusalem artichoke syrup in there too. Okay, so let's do one more salad before we end this demo. Now, if you like the crackers, I just want to say that I have some here for sale that you could buy right afterward for only $4 for the crackers. And, um, and uh, I have some that are made with the namashoyu and then some that are made with the coconut aminos, if you're interested. Okay. So, yeah, she has my bowl. My bowl's right behind this gentleman. Okay. All right. So... I'm going to teach you how to make tabbouleh, but not the traditional kind of tabbouleh that's made with the bulgur, right? Everybody's had that kind, right? Right, right? So I wanted to do something that was different. And so a lot of the raw food tabbouleh that are out there right now, they're using like almonds. And I was like, well, let's do something that doesn't, doesn't contain an almond. And one of the things that I love is quinoa, quinoa or quinoa. Quinoa. Quinoa, yes. Quinoa. I love it. And what's so great about it is that after it's been soaked and sprouted, it smells like fresh corn. You know, it has like a nice fresh corn smell. And so, and it's also nice and tender with some texture and chew and great protein. And so this, I just want to show people, like the people in the front row, you testify, you, you testify to me that there are little sprout tails on there. You see that? Yeah, tiny little woodlets. Like tiny little tails, right. So these are tiny little tails. And so what I do is I allow the quinoa, I wash it and I rinse it. Yeah, I wash it and I rinse it. And then I allow it to soak for about four hours. And then I put it at a 45, I put it at a 45 degree angle on a bamboo dish rack and I cover it with a towel and I go to bed and I wake up with these little beauties. You see them? See the little tails? It looks like a little tadpole. Oh, yeah. but only some see, it looks oh, yeah. like a little tadpole? Only a few of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, most of them have the yeah. little, yeah, they're right in there. Yeah. yeah, you can see that. So I'll just show everybody. So you can see the little tails? Okay. So how do you soak it? One-to-one ratio of water? No, it's, um, what I do is I usually take about a half a cup of quinoa, and then I soak it in probably about two cups of water. Okay? But you have to wash it first. You rinse it. You rinse the kiwan and to get some of the dust off of it. See the little tails? Yeah. Some of them are harder to see. Okay. All how right. Long, how long do you soak it? I soak it for a minimum of four hours. Yeah. Soak it for a minimum of four hours. Okay? So this is our sprouted quinoa. Okay. Now, I think that that's too long of a time to soak it. Yeah. So we take the so we take the quinoa. We take the quinoa that we've soaked, and we're just going to put it in. We're just going to put it in a bowl. Okay. 
And this is so easy. So we're going to add a lot of really delicious garden vegetables to our quinoa salad. And one of the things that I love is I love radishes. So you know turnips are similar to radishes. And I love, I, I love them. And so we're going to add some radishes in there. Doesn't it look exciting already? And this is beautifully stunning because we eat with our eyes too, right everybody? Okay, and then we're going to take some organic carrots, and I like to peel the carrots for this salad, but you don't have to. I personally like to. And so you can do it on a really fine grate or a heavier, a heavier shred. The, the carrot sort of turns dark. So it turns dark, right. By you peeling it. It's exactly. Right. And then, you know, we're going to take some Persian cucumbers, and what I do with the Persian cucumber is I cut it down the middle and I take the seeds out. If you leave the seeds in, it's going to make it too wet. So I take the seeds out and then I cut it at a, like a nice, like a nice dice. Everybody sees that? Okay. And so we're going to do this. Put in our Persian cucumbers. Okay. Now you could use another type of cucumber, but I prefer the Persian. All right. Then we've got our scallions. Now, I don't like to use the, the long green part for this particular recipe. I prefer using more of the, more of the onion part. So we're going to stick that in there. Now, what, everybody, what is always in tabbouleh? Dill. Parsley. Not dill. <laughs> Liz loves dill. She puts dill in everything. <laughs> okay, what, what, what do we always put in it? Parsley, that's right. And so, so do the, put the parsley in there, and then you can also take off the stems, and you can juice the stems. I don't recommend putting them in the salad. And then we're going to put in some mint, some beautiful chopped mint. Okay? Wow. Who's excited? Me. Uh, yeah. Are you serving this tonight? Yes, I'm serving that tonight, Liz. Thank you for asking. Yay. Woohoo. Okay, now we just need to do a dressing. So we're just going to do a really, really simple dressing. All right? So we're going to ha put in a little bit of our Palestinian olive oil. Okay. And so usually um, about three tablespoons worth of the Palestinian olive oil. I'm not going to use a measuring spoon. Will everybody trust me? Will you trust me? Okay. All right about three tablespoons worth. There we go. And then we're going to um, put in a little bit more, about four tablespoons of the lemon juice. And I love having little shaker bottles around because they make it so easy to be able to, to, be able to shake. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to add a little bit of the Himalayan salt. So I'm going to probably put in there about a half a teaspoon of the Himalayan salt. Okay. Oops. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, what's that? It's a fine rind, yeah. It's a fine. Yeah, it's a fine, yeah, it's a fine salt. Mm hmm Okay. And then we just put it in. We just shake it up. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit more olive oil in. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, after, after your quinoa has reached its desired length, I do recommend for refrigerating it. Okay, here we go. Okay. And Liz is going to be the official taster of this salad. Are you okay with that, Liz? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so... Is that a little squeeze bottle? Yes, I love it. Yeah, because it helps me to shake and squeeze at the same time. Oh, goodness. I know, shaking and squeezing at the same time, it's resourceful. <laughs> okay. Did you put a pepper in it? No. Now, what you can do is we could put a little, little sprinkle of cayenne in there. Or we could leave it out. What do you... I didn't want to leave it out? Just a little sprinkle? A little sprinkle? Would you get me um, two baby spoons? Thank you. All right, so we'll just do like a little sprinkle. All right, just a little bit. We'll just put a little bit in there. Now look how visually stunning this is. Now, if you're not a fan of tabbouleh, might this make you a fan of tabbouleh? Yes. It might make you, might make you a fan of it? Okay. All right. Okay. 
And so she's getting us a little baby spoon to be able to, to, be able to taste this. Now, what I recommend is mixing the salad no more than like 15 minutes to 30 minutes before you eat it. If you allow the salad, thank you very much. If you allow the salad to set, what's going to happen is it's going, the water, it's going, the salt in the dressing is going to take the water out of the cucumber and radish and it's going to kind of, you know, affect the flavor. Yeah. Okay. Now, one thing I put in my tabbouleh is always, and they, you have it in the Middle East, are the, are the cherry tomatoes. You cut them in half and you put the tomatoes in. That yeah. makes for color also. We're just doing a little different. Yeah, a little so different. So you, you see, you tell me what you think, Liz. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very crunchy. So this is something you have to mm-hmm. eat right away. You don't let it sit and refrigerate for leftovers. Well, you could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could let it. You could let it refrigerate, sit in the refrigerator. It gets a little bit wet. Yeah, it'll get wetter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice and chewy. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. And um, we're gonna serve some up. Okay. Um, so yeah, so um, I, yeah, put them in the little cups, the little one ounce cups. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. You said something about something about the carrots, so they they stay, they don't turn color. I need to about yeah. the peeling them. I, by peeling them. When mm-hmm. you pe- oh, by peeling. By peeling them, they'll stay very bright orange. Oh. If you if you leave the peel on, that sort of turns brown. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. It turns brown. Mm-hmm. And so, okay, so. Does anybody have any questions while we're while we're getting the yes? Yeah, the products that I'm using Artisana. Artisana is a great company. They're out of Oakland, and they are wonderful, wonderful people. They're a green company, and their nut butters and their coconut oil. Um, are fantastic, and I have information about them in the resource guide of my recipe booklet. Um, and they're one of the most honorable companies that that's out there, and they're local. And you can get all of their stuff here at Rainbow. And Whole Foods. And Whole Foods, yeah. Mm-hmm. In bulk. And you can get it in bulk, too. So say you don't want to buy a jar, you just want a little smidge, you can buy a smidge at Rainbow. Uh-huh. Um, when you, you know, cook quinoa, they always say be sure to soak them because the quinoa are coated on something in its uh, surface that is bitter. Yes. So how, does, did you, how do you remove that bitter coating in this You're stuff? supposed to rinse yeah. them about three different times. Yes. You three, s- different, three different clean washes. Right. So what, you do, what I do is when I wash my quinoa, I put it in the jar. I fill the jar with water and, or the bowl, and I take my hand, and then I drain it. Then I put water on it agitate it like I use my hand like a washing machine kind of like that and then I do it until the water runs clear and then I put it at the 45 degree at soak it for four hours and then I put it at 45 degree angle covered up like a little blanket and then it has the sprout and you'll find there isn't there isn't that bitter there isn't that bitter taste with the quinoa with that one mm-hmm. how long did that last the, like that I would say two days. Two days at the most. Yeah. And that's, that's a rule of thumb for all this sprouted yeah. seeds and stuff, a couple of days. Yes. Right. And then I, it's usually a good idea to rinse, mm-hmm. you know, at least once a day, oh. you know, with your sprouts or, with your sprouts or your seeds. Right. And so if, y- yes. Okay. So what happens is if you go like this, you know, it's not the optimal situation for sprouting. And so you want the water to drain because if the water doesn't drain, it's going to get moldy. So if you have it like at a 45 degree angle like this, the water can drain out and you see the sprouts are more evenly distributed along the side of the jar. So this is just a regular jar that I, a ball jar that I got at Rainbow. And then you can just buy the lids like this. And, or you can get the really big ones. Or you can just take a piece of cheesecloth with a rubber band or piece of jute and tie it, and you can make your own. You can make your own lid. I had one person even tell me that they stopped wearing pantyhose and were using their their pantyhose. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> I guess you could. But these lids yeah. come in three different sizes. This is right. a very small one. Uh-huh. They have a larger one if you want to do the mung bean sprouts. Right. They come in, they come in a little packet of three. Right, right, and so these are these are a fantastic, um, fantastic resource. And so one more time, <laughs> while they're getting the samples ready, um, the products that I use today um, is the Irish Moss, and 
This Irish moss is usually, let me just show you what it looks like. It looks kind of daunting because it looks kind of like a creature from the sea, right? So I just rinse the sand off of it. I just rinse the sand off of it and uh, then I allow it to soak for 24 hours and then I blend it into a gel. And so Irish moss is, is featured in my dinner tonight um, because when you dehydrate using Irish moss, it is fantastic because your tortillas are pliable. You know, like a lot of the raw tortillas that are out there, they, they have that overwhelming flax taste and it's like, you know, it's just too much. But it's a lot more pliable and flexible. They need the baby spoons. They need the baby spoon. Yeah, Liz, tell them to get the... They, they need the spoons. Yep, enough. Okay. Yeah, so, so like the falafels, I put this in the falafels. Okay, yeah, we'll bring out the spoons. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get the spoons. Yeah, if you don't have a spoon, yeah. And so the Irish moss, um, it helps it to be like, like the falafel to be crunchy on the outside but soft on the inside. And the tortillas to be pliable. And then for like the macadamia feta, so it's not as much nut. And so that's a great way to, to be able to do it. I also used a little bit of chia in my tortilla. And she, and um, I'm sorry, Mila. And Mila is the best chia that's out on the market. And I have some for sale at my booth. Um, this is like the Mercedes Benz. Is that like the best car in the world, the Mercedes Benz or Rolls Royce? Like the Rolls Royce of chia. What makes it special? Just, it's just from the most pure seed and it's cut to release the optimal, you know. I don't, use it th I don't use it that often, but I mean, it is because it's expensive. I just usually use regular chia. But for these tortillas, I used a little bit of, a little bit of the mila in there. Um, also, I told you about the coconut vinegar and the coconut aminos, but I wanted to also tell you about the coconut nectar. So this is a great substitute for agave because you know agave with the glycemic index so the coconut nectar is nice like molasses. It's, it's delicious. Okay. And then, of course, the royal Himalayan salt, the natural colloidal salt. This is great. Yeah, and I think that I, think that I covered everything. I think that I covered everything for you. And so we're getting our, we're getting our little samples of uh, our quinoa tabbouleh. Does anybody, anybody want to tell me what they think? It's delicious. You, you give it a thumbs up? Yeah. So, no, thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's different from a lot of the raw tabbouleh that are out there on the market, right? Yeah. yeah, and so, right, and so this is just really delicious. And so the recipes for everything are in my, in my little booklet. Everything that I'm making for the raw dinner tonight, all the recipes are in here for only $7. Plus, I have a bonus recipe a bonus recipe in here of my cashini tahini miso pate. And that is like a super delicious um, alternative um, to, to regular pates and dips. And that is in here as well. So if anybody's interested, and I have some crackers. You could take these and nosh on them, you know, during the next lecture if you want. <laughs> and I have some um, that are made with the coconut aminos that are, glut that are gluten free and some that are made with the nama shoyu if you're interested. And the last dish was called what again? The last one was my sprouted quinoa and garden vegetable tabbouleh. Yes, tabbouleh. And then we passed a list around, right? Okay, there should have been a list that got passed around. Does anybody have it? Okay, everybody that signed the list I'll send you the recipe for my squash hummus. Yeah, so you'll get that via email. If you want recipes for the other things that you tasted here and that are in my dinner, the recipes are in my book. So Liz, Liz, do you have any closing remarks? Do you have any closing remarks? <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and let's give Lisa a big hand of applause for it. Oh, thank you. All the work.
about two hours of sleep the last three nights preparing for all this. So thank right. you. Right. It uh, it's been it's been a long process, but there's a beautiful dinner for you tonight. You can get the tickets if you're interested at the SFES information booth. And take one pack of each. Right. And now, as promised, as promised, everybody, we have some parting gifts for you. We have parting gifts. So hold on. Ladies, come on in. So, not only are you getting cashini, not only are you getting tahini, you're also getting free hemp seeds and free coconut oil. Coconut oil. Yes. So, 